Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, my name is Rosemary Donovan, and I am, let's see, my new, my, I have a new title, and it's Curriculum Coordinator K-12 Guidance. Um, which means if I had your child prior to this year, I no longer am that child's guidance counselor. Um, I don't have any students, so we have new we had a shift in the guidance counselor and additions to our staff, which have been amazing. Um, and I'm going to go over those first, just so you know who, when we break up at the end of this meeting. If you want to ask specific questions, um, we're going to have four different groups going on. Uh, Mr. McCurtain had a family situation occur today um, that he cannot be here tonight, so I'm going to take Mr. McCurtain's group um, along with Ms. Anderson, who is our new guidance counselor, and so we'll work together. Um, Mr. McCurtain's group is last name beginning with P to Z. Ms. O'Hare, who is right there, is letters J through O. Ms. Owen. It are letters DJ, which I don't know if many names start with DJ, but maybe, um, to I, and Miss Goldie is A through DI, and Miss Anderson is a combination <laughs> of um, seniors and ELL students. So when we break up at the end of this, we're going to go through the presentation that your students are seeing this week. So um, all of the senior students are going. Um, the, the guidance counselors are going into the English classes and um, having this lesson with the exception of one of Mr. Roy's class due to senior um, voting, we're going to do that next week. Um, so what you see tonight is what we present to your children in class. They saw this last year um, and so when they say oh, I never heard that before, oh, my guidance counselor didn't say that. They probably have, they just forget. And so this will be up on the website as well, and um, our public media center said they're going to tweet it out and all sorts of um, ways of accessing it. So it's just a good reference point later on um, when you're looking to Oh, what was that website that they talked about or what was that email. You can always go and do that. Um, so I'm just going to go through it. Please feel free to stop as we go along um, if you have any questions, but there will be time at the end for you to be broken up with your child's guidance counselor if you have specific questions. We do have their GPAs and their class ranks, which are in deciles for the most part, other than numbers 1 through 10 are ranked, and after that they're put in deciles. Your children can come down to see us and we will give it to them, or if you want to ask that, we will give you an index card, ask you to put your child's name on it, and we'll look it up just for secure, um, not security reasons, that sounds like it's super duper secure, but just for privacy reasons, we don't want other people to know what your child's GPA or class rank is. So um, we'll begin, and um, again, just stop me as we go along, and my colleagues will probably interject when I forget to say something. Um, and we'll start right away. All right, we're going. All right, so the biggest question for a lot of the kids is which way do they go? What are they doing? There are so many options for kids today. Four-year college is obviously one of the, the main one, and most of you that are here are probably here to talk about that. But we also have great opportunities in our community colleges where students can go to a community college for two years, um, pay tuition for a community college for two years, have a good GPA, and be able to access a four-year college from there and get a four-year degree in four years with a fraction of the price. Next. <clears throat> um, what do you want to do? Do you want a four-year community college? I'm going to do this. We had it set up differently, and I was going to be in charge of it, like from here, and I can't do that because it didn't work, so I'm going to hold this. Um, a four-year community college, military. Um, every, uh, every few years, we have a, a huge group of kids go into the military. I think last year we had six students go into the military, so that's a, a big number. Trade and technical schools. 
Um, we're doing a lot with Petersons, all the different technical schools. Um, um, Catherine Hines on Washington. Woburn actually has a lot of technical schools and kids are um, also utilizing that. Um, some kids go right out to employment. Our job and our goal is to bring your child to their best spot, where they belong. So we don't want to push those kids. We definitely want to hear from you. So if your intention is that your child do X, Y, or Z, please let us know. Call your child's guidance counselor so that our conversations can kind of revolve around that as well. Next. Um, I will tell you, and this is really true, Mr. McCurtain made this slide, and it is probably a little bit of an exaggeration, but honestly, if you look at it, the blue is whining. Your kids are going to whine. They're going to tell you that they can't do this, it's too much, they're so stressed out, they have so much to do, blah, blah, blah. Complaining is the orange or the red, hyperventilating, wanted to cry in a pillow forever, confused, and that little orange part is the actual work. And when I say actual work, we're talking about the actual application. The common application, which is the most commonly used application, and it's usually one application for all of them, takes less than one hour if you sit down and do it and close the door and do it from beginning to end. What a it doesn't count the essay. The essay is a process. <laughs> but other than the process, the Common App really doesn't take that long. What happens is kids start and stop and start and stop and start and stop. And so it feels like it's taking forever. If it's raining out and they're not going anywhere, put them in a I was going to say a closet. Don't do that. Put them, put them in a corner somewhere. Have yourself in the other room so you can answer the questions. Some of the questions that they can't answer. How many years of education do you guys have? You know, did dad go to school? All these questions that they might not know, you might have to help them. Other than that, it's name and address and what they want to do. It's really not complicated. The, the, the process is not but it does need a focus. So I would suggest, if your child hasn't started the Common App yet, to actually just be available to them one night for an hour where they can focus on it and have them do most of it. And it will be a, a large weight off their body. All right, seniors are gonna meet with their counselors. Senior, teach, senior counselors are meeting with all of these seniors now in their English classes, but they also will be meeting with them individually. They did this last year as well, and so um, the, the students have folders and guidance, and we have their SAT scores, their likes, their dislikes, what they want to do, what colleges they're thinking about, and that's going to be updated this year when they meet with their, their guidance counselors. Um, we have an, a college fair um, at the Shriner Center, which I would actually recommend if you haven't gone to one. This is a great one to go to with your child. Um, it's at the Shriner Center. They usually have about a hundred different colleges and it's just a great opportunity for you to kind of get an idea of what the college application process is like and what they're looking for. Every college is looking for something different um, and what I like about a college fair is that they might go into this college fair not knowing a certain college. They'd never heard of what was the college my son never heard? Green Mountain College in Vermont, right? And I was like, well, it's called Green Mountain. You're not going. Like, that's just a weird name. It would have been a great college for him because it was right up his alley. It had everything he was looking for, and we had never heard of it, and I'm a guidance counselor. So that was an awesome school for him to investigate and look at. So sometimes when you go to those um, college fairs, there's things that they can connect with that they wouldn't connect with. We live in such a overpopulated area of colleges that our colleges are, you know, we think right here within the, the, the area. And there's so many thousands and thousands of colleges out there that your child might um, connect with. So it's a great opportunity. Um, you have, the student has three excused absences um, for this year to go visit a college. It's a great idea to take a Friday or a Monday um, and, and try to do like a loop, um, you know, hit, go out on Friday and hit one in New Hampshire or two in New Hampshire on Friday and Saturday and then do one on Sunday in, in Vermont and then head back. 
you know, and you can take the day and it gets excused. Obviously, a child is responsible for the work that they miss, but the absences don't go against them. Um, searches, the Naviance College Board, those are the searches. We use Naviance. Um, hopefully, you've all been on Naviance with your child. If you haven't, please ask your child to sit down with you and show you the Naviance account. It actually is very easy to manipulate, and once you figure out how to do it, you can go on when they're not there and kind of just look at colleges and, and live vicariously through them. Um, interviews, it's really important, I think, if your child um, is able to interview, that they do interview. The difference between being able to visually see a child when you're, you're going through their application or going through a name, um, I think it makes a big difference. If your child is exceptionally shy, um, doesn't have good eye contact, is interview, you know, skills are not there, have them work with you and or their guidance counselor. I've done many mock interviews with students before where I would say, well, when you're looking down like that, they're, you know, they don't know your answer. So in, in pose some interview questions. Um, we do it all the time, so if they're extremely shy and there is an interview option, send them down to us and we'll work with them or you can work with them at home. If there is an interview option, it's really a good, especially if they really wanna go to that school, it's a really good idea for you to allow them to, to take advantage of that. Next, up, oh, sure. Yes, but well, uh, so you, no, you apply and then you, you call the school and you ask to set up an interview. Yep. Yes, yeah, so you apply and then once you've applied, you call and you set up an interview. Some schools like, so I'm just using Harvard because it came to my head, Harvard will ask you to have an interview. They have 35, 39,000 applicants and 1,500 acceptances. They do not interview, they ask you to interview. So some schools would only allow you to interview if the, you make it through their cut, but other schools would, you know, would set up an interview for you. Some schools interview at um, Starbucks. You know, they have alumni come in and interview at Starbucks. It's very casual. No, it, this isn't an, an I gotcha kind of thing. This is really the colleges want to get to know your child. So um, it really is a positive experience for both people. Your child should go with a little information. They should have gone on the website. Um, just as an example, why do you want to come here? Your child's gone on to the website. They realize that you, they have a best buddies program. It's something that they've been involved in in high school so that they can say, well, I noticed you have a best buddies. That's something I'm really involved with. And that shows the person who's interviewing the interest of your child. Showing an interest in the schools, for most schools, not all, some schools don't take this into account at all, but most schools will really take consideration if you visited the school, interviewed, um, stayed overnight. You know, there's lots of things that you can do to show interest in a school, and every time you do that and your child signs something that they've done that, that gets counted. So if they're really interested in a school, it's definitely worth their while to kind of put some effort into going to that school. Oh, sure, I'm sorry. So the college visits and guidance. You should be receiving on a, a weekly basis and it's, it's being, um, the students I know are receiving it and it's also um, listed in morning announcements. Every week we send out a two week um, schedule of the colleges that are coming to our schools. This is a great opportunity for your students to meet the admissions people from that school. Um, this week we've had, anybody know? No, my interns are doing them. Um, BU is coming, Tufts is coming, um, Westfield State came, and so what happens is they come and the person that usually comes to our school is the person who will be reading the applications of your child. So they send the Wuben representative to the school. And that's great because the kids have an opportunity to ask questions specific to that application process. 
It is during the school day, so your child has to get permission from that teacher. We have made it so that they're all different um, periods, so that they're not always missing second period or always missing fourth period. Um, but it's also something you have to watch. I looked at one sign-up sheet for the next two weeks, and the same girl was signed up for all those schools. And one of them was like a technical school, another one was like Harvard, and another one was, she really isn't interested in those schools. She's just probably interested in getting out of class. So <laughs> um, just be, you know, comment to your child, ask them, make sure you see it. Uh, Maureen Trickett is the one who sends it out, and she gives you a two-week schedule. So you should be receiving that. If you're not, um, make sure you inquire why, and we'll make sure you get that. Um, we do have a great number of schools coming, and it's a great opportunity for a small group of kids to ask great questions about the application process. One of our guidance counselors and or one of our interns goes and kind of helps facilitate good questions. Thanks, Maureen. Next. All right, standardized testing. Most of your students, hopefully, at this point have taken them. So it's a little bit, um, you know, they got this last year. Um, standardized testing for most schools is still an important piece of it, but there are definitely a number of schools now that are taking that off the table. Some of our state schools are even taking it off the table, and they're requiring three short essays instead. Tell us why you want to come to the school, blah, blah, blah. So there's definitely options for kids who do not test well. So the standardized tests are obviously your SATs and your ACTs. They're equally accepted at all of our colleges. So um, it doesn't matter which they take or if they take both, they can send just their better scores. Um, and we, they do what they call super scoring, which is um, the schools will take just the best of each of the tests. So if they took a test in June and they got a 600 on math and a 550 on reading, and then they took another test in September and they got a 500 on math and a 600 on reading, they would take the two 600s. So there, again, it's not an I get you. It, they don't want kids to not succeed. They're looking for the best scores, and they really are. They're, they take just the best scores. Um, and if your child doesn't test well, then there are schools that we can gear them towards that will look for a high GPA. So I'm just gonna say um, Holy Cross doesn't require SAT or ACT scores, but to get into Holy Cross, you have to have a very good GPA. And they're looking at all those things that you've done. Um, so you can't have a 2.5 and not take the SATs and get into Holy Cross. You have to have that exceptional SAT, um, I'm sorry, GPA to get in there. So even though you don't have the SATs or ACT scores, your GPA has to be there, if that makes sense. All right, next. Okay, so these are the deadlines for these tests. So if the, your child is still looking to take a test this year, hopefully they all have taken them. If they haven't, please sign up for the November 3rd. That's a must if they haven't taken that. Um, December 1st is not too late for some schools, but um, you definitely want to have it before. Fee waivers, if your child qualifies for free or reduced lunch, send them down to guidance and we will give them a fee waiver. They're allowed two fee waivers for SATs and two for ACTs. And um, that will help with the college application process as well. It will help with the expense of the um, application fee. Um, Wuben High is a test site. We do fill up, so you want to make sure that you um, sign up early. Um, and then sending your scores. I can't, I'm going to say this probably 20 times during this um, presentation. It is their responsibility to send SAT scores. We do not send SAT scores. We cannot send SAT scores. The schools will not take SAT scores from us. They used to. When you went to school, when even some of our younger guidance counselors went to school, they would take the SAT scores from the guidance counselors. They now require them be sent from the college board. So it's another $12, just saying it's a money market. 
um, and they require you to send them. Very, in, you know, in the, on an occasion, if somebody takes a late SAT and they're just looking to see, they'll say, if you send us the score, we'll take it as a preliminary and then we'll wait for the, for the other one and we can do that, but it is, we say it a hundred times and every year kids say, well, I didn't know I had to send this SAT scores and that becomes a problem. So just make sure you let your child know it's their responsibility to send their SAT scores. Yeah, yeah. and, and you, it, you have a question? You cannot send just one set of scores unless you go in. So if you sent your scores from May 5th, all the scores will be sent. If you haven't sent any yet, you can go in and choose the May 5th scores and it's called um, choice select or something. It's very specific. Um, if you only want to send, you can super score them on your own. Typically, the average student doesn't do that, but if you really want to do that, you can, but you have to be very specific about that on the application. I'm sorry, it's not the application, it's when you choose it from College Board. I'm sorry, yep, so it's the College Board. When you go on the College Board website to send the SAT scores, you choose the score. If you choose to send your scores, if you went on today, your kids have finished taking their scores and you want them sent, if you send the June scores, any scores that they've taken will go unless you do that very specific s s choice. Yep. Yep. Once you send out an application, you cannot change it. Yep. So you, you, you definitely want it to be perfect before you send out anything. Yep. So there's a question on your Common App, for those of you who haven't started that yet, that says, do you want to self-report your scores? There really isn't any real benefit for it unless you're sending your scores to all your schools. If you have any schools on your list that you don't want to send your scores to, don't self-report. You send your call from the College Board and they'll get them. Okay, yes. Free. Yep. So they they have been told that in that when we do our presentation, that is definitely something we tell the kids. And so that within I think it's a couple of days after their taking of the test, they can go on and send it for free to I think it's four schools. Yeah. You don't know what you got on it, and that's a really hard thing. So Sometimes, and when I say, like, the, I don't know about everybody, but when I tell a student to super score, the only time I tell a student to super score is if they did really poorly on one, and then it was a, a, a marked difference in another. If you did 550 on one and got a 600 on another, the school's just gonna super score it. If you did a 450 on one and a 650 on another, they're gonna go, oh, whoa what was going on, you know what I mean? It might be a highlight, but I personally think, and I really do believe that schools are not looking, the, the admissions people are not looking to get you. They're looking to say, what's the best this kid's done? And take that. So unless you have an extreme difference, I don't think you need to super score. Just, um, just question back there, Rosemary. Say it again. Oh, question, go ahead. So we can send the SAT scores now even though the application has not been completed. Yes, yep. 
and as long as you know where they where you're sending them where they're applying because you definitely don't want to waste your money and if you don't know where they're applying you don't want to send them yep and and it does take a couple of weeks for them to get in so if they're going early and you know where they're applying send them now so when they get their application they can make that decision quickly yes MCAS? Yep, they should have gotten them. They go on the college board. Yep, yep, yeah, and they would have gotten an email from the college board that gives them their SAT scores. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next. Um, so the ACTs, it's SATs, standardized test, administered on the same day. Um, oh, the subject test, excuse me. I'm like, can't read. SAT 2. So there's a subject test for an hour. Um, it has a two-hour exam in a specific subject. There are a few colleges that require these, um, and your child would have, would if they're applying to Tufts, where else? BU? If they're not, Harvard. Yeah, and if they're not required, some strongly recommend. So there's yeah. different language that can be used so when the students are looking at the application requirements, which we ask them to do, because all colleges ha may have different requirements, that's where they should be finding them right now if they right. haven't already researched which ones are either required or strongly recommended. Right, and those are in specific classes. So we always suggest kids who are in AP Chemistry or AP that have it in the spring of their junior year. That's when we recommend those students take those subject tests because they're just coming off their AP class, they've gotten that knowledge, and so we say, if your schools are requiring them, this is a good time to take them. Certainly not too late, they can take the October test, um, they can take the November test, um, it's just, you know, if they decided on, on applying to a school that requires them. Um, you can take up to three on one day, it's the same day as the regular SATs, they just wouldn't take the regular SATs. They would go in a different room where they're getting the subject test. Um, okay, next. ACT is just another version. It's a, just a different version of a standardized test. When I first started in guidance 15 years ago, there was maybe one or two kids who took the ACTs. Now I would say we have at least a third. A third of our students take the ACTs. And honestly, it's just an alternative test. So if they don't do well on the SATs and they think they might do better on the ACT, there's a little bit of a difference, um, they can take that. Um, schools um, take both of them equally. So one is not better than the other. Some students just do better on others. Um, again, there's a fee waiver that can go along that. Again, you're sending the scores or your child is sending the scores, and should you take both? We basically say everybody take the SAT. If you don't do well or you don't see that you're going to do better um, by studying or working hard, try the ACTs and see if you do better. Um, it's just another kind of, they ask questions a little bit differently. Okay. So, it, so you, would only, you would send the better scores if they're equal, and oftentimes, I did probably about six years ago, I did a breakdown of how the kids did in the school, and, and it almost came out exactly. A third of the students did the same. Their SAT scores and ACT scores, because we have a conversion sheet that says if you got a, you know, a, this number on the SATs, it means that you're this on the ACTs. So a third of the students did the same, a third of the students did worse, and a third of the students did better. If you do better, you send your ACT scores. If you do the same, you can send both, but what you're showing them is you're consistently the same, which is fine, but you're sending it and it's costing you money. And if you did worse, you certainly don't send them. Next. Um, letters of recommendation. This is always kind of, we've worked really hard to get our juniors to do this in their junior year, at their end of their junior year. Um, students ask two and no more than two teachers. 
um, depending on what they're going for, um, might dictate who they ask. So if a student is going to be an engineer, they would probably ask their physics teacher. If they're going to be a math teacher, they're going to ask a math teacher. Um, if they're going to, um, I don't know, be, be a, um, a, in, in the medical field, they're gonna ask their chemistry or their biology teacher. Um, so basically where you're going, what you're going for can sometimes dictate. So if you're going for humanities and you're, you're not sure or you're undecided, you can certainly go and ask a math teacher and an English teacher or a history teacher. Um, students that are going for, um, they want to go, um, police academy, what is the, criminal justice. You're going to go to criminal justice. You might ask your history teacher. There's a, there's a connection there. Um, but you can only ask two. The colleges do not want more than two. I know you want every teacher to write every positive thing that they know about your child, and so you think more is better. More is not better. What they will do, if it says they, they will only take two, if you send three, they just will not read one of them, and it might be the better one. So you have to be careful about that. If it says maximum two, they mean maximum two. If it says maximum one, only one of them will go. And I will explain how that gets chosen. Yes? They will only read two. If the college says maximum two, the college will choose which two they read. The college will, if the, the college will read the amount of recommendations that they say they will read. Right? The reason that is, is because, the, the reason that is I, I called them today is the SAT just got released. I, I received them today. And we could not, and it's across the board, no, no school in the area has been able to upload. The SAT scores are um, needed for the profile. And the profile is needed for the teachers to upload the, their recommendations and for us to send them. We will not send them until it's time. So it doesn't, you know, Naviance is working because the first deadline is November 1st and we will not be sending them until right prior to November, November 1st, so there's weeks. It's just that we have to upload the profile which, and we have to put the SAT scores, the average SAT scores from last year's. They were just released on Sunday and ours were just released today. So I, I called Naviant and I worked through it and uploaded certain things. But they, I, I'm just telling you what we are told from the admissions people. More is not better. If you want to send a soccer coach a separate letter, feel free. But do not, they will we'll only send two because they'll only allow us to send to it literally will not allow us to send more than what they you know suggest is the max so um, if you send it separately to the admissions people they will not read it if you send it to the coach the coach will read it and that might sway his desire to have your child and push for that kid you know if he's if he's good and they want him on the team and you send a recommendation then that coach might um, 
advocate more strongly for your child. That makes sense. So Holy Cross might not have a max. Right. So that was, <laughs> so it is a tricky situation when there's two letters of recommendation in there and only one can go. And um, I had a long conversation with one of our teachers the other day about this. We read them as guidance counselors. We don't traditionally read them unless there's a reason for us to read them. If only one can be sent, if they're going, I'm going to use the example again, if they're going for engineering, we would use probably the physics teacher. Um, you know, sometimes it could be an art teacher and a physics teacher for this child. And if they're going for engineering, we would just naturally send that physics recommendation. If it's only one, we will read them and see which one highlights the most positive points. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. Abs Absolutely. The application is somewhat cut and dry. It allows you to do what it allows you to do, but that other outreach information is great. Going to the open houses, talking to the coaches, I'm sure, you know, there's already been a connection made. Those things can happen for that. Yes. Absolutely. Most colleges don't want more than two. Um, because they just have so many that they read that they try to just streamline it for two. Um, but so it depends on what the mentor has to say. Um, and if it's, you know, colleges want to know what the student is like as a, as a, they get one from us as well, so the guidance counselor writes one, and the guidance counselor's one is much more about character and activities that they do in the school where the teachers is more about what kind of student they are. Um, so it depends. If it's something like a passion or something that they've really gone above and beyond that nobody else knows about, you could probably send it to the admission. But again, you just don't know if it's gonna be you know, I, I can't speak to what every college is gonna, if they're gonna read it or not. I think you have to read it and see if it's worth the wait, yeah. Um, oops, sorry, yes. Hi, honey, how are you? So I just answered, a parent just asked me about that. That's quite all right, you were up in the booth and I get that. So what, we've, what happened was is that we need to upload a profile of our school and in that profile are the SAT scores of last year's students. And those were only released on Sunday and our school only got them today. So I was on the phone this afternoon with the uh, Naviants and I'm uploading them that the profile itself will be adjusted and uploaded by this weekend. Um, so I, I'm gonna say on the safe side by Tuesday, um, all the teachers will be able to upload them. The, the point of upload them takes a second and the point for us to hit submit takes a minute. So once the teachers have written them, you're, you're in really good shape.
You're welcome, honey. No, no, it's, it's, for the most part, required for a common app, and it does not count as one of the two. And, and I would say that most schools read them, but, you know, who knows, but it's not one of the two. What? <laughs> All right. Um, one thing that's really important is, um, well, providing the information, most of you hopefully have seen the parent brag sheet, the kids' autobiographical sketches and the checklist. They should have filled those out, given them to their guidance counselors and their teachers. That helps write a really good letter. I really love the parent brag sheet because kids don't brag about themselves as much as their parents do, and we find things out on those parent brag sheets that we wouldn't know about the student, and we as guidance counselors are the only ones that get that. And so we can really personalize that letter, and I love that. Um, so if you haven't seen them, yes. Nope, that's okay. Never. Nope, never. Never, ever, ever. So that's waiving your rights. That's the next one. So the students, it's, it's funny because it actually looks like they give you an option to waive your rights or not. It's not an option. If you don't waive your rights, we cannot send your letters. So <laughs> um, it's not an option. Colleges want to know that you've waived your rights, and the only way that we can send your letters of recommendation is if your child has waived their rights to see their letters. Now, that's not to say that a teacher, some teachers will hand your child the letter and say, this is for you, you can take a look at it. We, in guidance, follow the, the rules of the college, and the rules of the college is that we do not show our letters. Um, they want to know that there is no pressure to write positive things about students that you don't feel positively about, which of course we feel positively about all our students, but they want to know that there's really no pressure there. Um, so we do not show the letters, and again, when it comes time for scholarships, it comes into play again, because we use the same letters for scholarships, but we have a great system, and we work with our staff that we get those scholarship applications done with the letters and it's not a problem. So you do not get to see them. Um, that being said, if somebody says they'll write you a letter of recommendation, they're willing to write you a positive letter of recommendation. You know, we don't read every single one of them, but we see them. They're beautiful. You know, for the most part, they're, they're exceptionally well written letters. We're good? Um, so that speaks to waiving your right to read your letters. You must do that. Um, teachers will upload the letters to Naviance, hopefully by Tuesday. Um, letters will be sent to the counselors. And then um, on Naviance, if your child doesn't have another option of a resume builder, um, there's a resume builder on Naviance that they can go to. It's on the left-hand side. And they can put in all of the things that they've done in their, you know, in their four years of high school. It's really helpful. Again, that will come into a lot of help when they are applying for scholarships because instead of rewriting it constantly, they'll be able to attach their resume. So it's nice. Some of the business classes write resumes. Some actually even the English classes write resumes. So it's a nice thing to do. But if they haven't, if they're not in any of those classes that are doing them, Naviance does have that. Can I just add one? Yeah, please do. Um, for students that are not necessarily going early action and who do have some time and maybe haven't filled out that packet, we do just want to remind you and the students to just be um, gracious with the time that they give letter writers so that if, um, you know, we've many a time had kids bring us the sketch and say, yeah, my application's due tomorrow. Can you have this done by tomorrow? And that's really unrealistic. So please, with teachers and with guidance counselors, if kiddos um, haven't asked yet, you know, ask early, but then also give some time. You know, it's appropriate to have a couple weeks for us to be able to add you to the list for finishing them. Excuse me. Yes. You ask your child. Oh, you mean the teachers? The teachers? Um, well, we would, so we, when the, the students have asked the teachers, if the child is ready and about ready to, to um, send their applications, we meet with them. And if the letter's not uploaded, we as guidance counselors would contact the teacher and say, 
he, you know, they should tell him if they're going early. That was, you know, part of the deal is if you're going early, which is November 1st, November 15th, that you let the teachers know that you're going early, and then th the teachers would be able to um, make sure they have it done for that. But we meet with the students, and if, the, if we look at the student's um, Navian's account and the teacher hasn't uploaded it, we can call them. And they, all, they get them done. They do. And, and to, to another point, when the child hits submit, their application is done. So even if, which is not our, it's not what we do, but even if the letters of recommendation and the transcripts weren't sent, the colleges still um, identify your child's application as done is if they meet the deadline on the day it's due. So if we're three, four, or five days later, it's fine, as long as your child has hit submit on the day that it's due. And we don't do that. We, we like very, yeah, we definitely like to do it together. We have the child tell us the day after they've sent it, and we send it the next day. Okay, yes. That's okay. So we have them tonight. Your child can also access them from the guidance counselors if they, you know, if they haven't done so yet. Okay, so she, so you can ask any one of us tonight. You can go to the, your child's guidance counselor specifically. I just, for, for privacy purposes, will give you a, a, a note card. You write your child's name on it and we'll write the GPA as opposed to saying it out loud. Yes, yep, yes. Um, no. It's as of last, it is as of second semester junior year. So it probably hasn't changed a great deal, but we have the accurate one with us tonight and the, the thing. And our um, secretary who does that said she's hoping to get that into Naviance by the end of the week. Um, so in a couple of days it will be, yes. Um, yes, yeah, so um, for seniors, it's recalculated every term. Yeah, except for the last, so that first, second, and third, and the class rank and so forth for graduation is dependent on the, after the third term. Okay. Um, okay. Um, students responsible for letting the counselor know if they're applying early, responsible for submitting application through Common App, so, or the, so some schools still do not are not on the common app so they have individual but there's not that many anymore um, but some some schools still have their own that you would do um, you are su responsible for submitting your a SAT and ACT scores and the counselor is responsible for submitting the transcripts letters of recommendation and the school profile and that school profile is what I was talking about that I was waiting for those SAT scores um, and we send that off to the schools um, all together. So typically the student tells us, my deadline's November 15th, they come in November 13th, said I applied last night, we say sit down. I know with my students, everybody does it different. I made them sit with me while I hit submit, 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 because oftentimes the, the, there's sometimes a lag between when the colleges say that they've received that information and the students will come down the next day and say you didn't submit it and I'm like no look it says submitted it just takes a few days to catch up so if it doesn't happen the day after just be patient it does take a couple of days to catch up and they will be sending emails yes so that causes a lot of panic <laughs> but the colleges send email after email saying we don't have this material um, you can certainly check with us, but please trust that we, we have sent it. It's their system of just wanting to remind you guys. Yep. And, and it's not necessarily up to date. Yep. I heard Ms. Moore's email the day you just came earlier. Because sometimes it's like they're like, they're like yep. so I think it's a good time to read something that the school can receive it from the inbox. Because if you don't get email, you will probably be fine. Yeah. Just don't panic. Yes. Say it again. Because we will not be ready. Um, we, 
You can, I think, if as long as the schools are accepting them, um, if you want to get it off his to-do list. And you, I mean, at your point, it's just hit and submit and paying. And for ours, it's making sure that the, um, the profile is, is, is ready and the teacher's recommendations are up, but you can. Yeah. All right, the essay, my favorite topic. Um, this causes a lot of stress for a lot of kids. A lot of kids started it in their English classes as juniors. Some of them are working on them this week with Mr. Roy's class. I know that's one of the reasons that we're not going to be able to get into that one class this week because there's been elections and interruptions in his class and he's really wanting to do the comment, the essay. I'm going to tell you a story about my son, which he always loves when I talk about him, but he wrote an essay um, for his college application and he wrote it, wouldn't let me read it because what would I know? Um, I'm only a guidance counselor and, you know, he wanted to have other people edit it and all this stuff. He worked on it for months. We were hitting submit on the application and we went to go upload his essay and he said, I don't like my essay. Now, this is on a Tuesday and the deadline's Friday. And I said, tough, whatever, you're putting that in. You wouldn't let me look at it. And he goes, no, I just don't like it. And he said, I promise I'll do another one. I said, you don't have time for another one. So he wrote another one. And I have to say, he let me read this one. It was awesome because it spoke about who, who he was as a child. So what was missing from the first one was what he thought he should have written about. He thought he should have written about a certain topic because that's what people think. And what that was, it was a very clinical, very boring, very whatever essay. And what ended up happening is when he didn't want to send that and he wrote about what he loved, it was a beautiful essay. And I then did have my sister, who's an English teacher, edit it. <laughs> you know, I didn't let it go by without any kind of exam. But it was a much better essay. I ended up reading both essays, and the one he took a month and a half to write wasn't nearly as good as the one he took a day and a half to write because it came from his heart. So if you can think, walk away with one thing about the essay is be genuine. Write about something they care about and something that the person reading who's never met your child, when they finish reading that essay, are going to say, wow, I'd love to meet that kid. That's a cool kid. They'd be great on our campus. They'd be a great role model for other kids. So you want to kind of get that um, feeling of, you know, genuine passion for something. And it doesn't have to be big. They did not have to go to Haiti after a tsunami and build houses. My, my son wrote about his friends and wrote about the culture in his group of friends. And it was very meaningful and very purposeful. You could write honestly about what flavor ice cream you like if you, if you do it well. So grammatically perfect, have everybody you know that has, not me because I don't know where commas go and I can't spell, but um, have people edit it, have people do that, but do not make them write about something you think they should write about, right? Let them write about something that is important to them. We as guidance counselors, I love reading my essays. I think it's, it's one of my favorite, it's, one of, it's actually what I'm gonna miss not having students is not reading those essays because it just gives you a light into their light, uh, life as well. Um, but people, and also one other thing I say about it is have someone that doesn't know your child read their essay because you reading their essay, their guidance counselor brings what you know, like, of course, I love my son. And so when I read that about my son, I was like, oh, you know, whatever. Um, but if somebody that doesn't know him gets the same feeling, you know it's really hitting home. Questions about the essay? Oh. Oh. I did. Look at me. 12 points of grader. I don't know what that is. You spell check. Okay. All right. Next. Um, here's the website for the Common App, and um, you can get a list of colleges that use it just by hitting on um, members, but for the most part, 
Uh, most colleges take it, there's a, there, but there is definitely a handful that don't. Um, what each individual college requires on the supplemental section. So some colleges have separate sections. When you go to apply, when you're filling in the application, it will say additional essays or other things, and you can just fill those in. Um, take as much time on those essays, because they're really looking at that. If they say, why BU? Why do you want to come to BU? That's an important question to them, okay? So you want to make sure that your child takes time, looks at really why they're doing that. Um, fee waivers, if you qualify for free or reduced lunch, please see the guidance counselors, make sure you're using them. Um, this is really important. This is a new addition to this <laughs> PowerPoint. Do not use the school email. It will completely restrict access. Yes. Oh, I didn't even know it. Yeah, and somebody else just said if you visit a school, they'll often give you a free um, application. It can definitely run up. Can I just say, though, you don't need to apply just because it's free. If you aren't interested in your child going to that school, don't apply. You're just wasting a lot of people's time and energy on that. Common App has made it very easy to just hit submit, 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 especially if there's free ones. But if you really have zero or your child has zero interest in going, it's just a waste of time. We have an average usually between six and eight. I've had some kids do 19. I've had one student do 19, um, got into all 19. It was, you know, a, a lot of money, and I have had students do one. So, um, you know, we recommend that they have reach schools if they want them, schools that they're very much right in that wheelhouse, like right where they belong, and then safety schools. So a couple in each, in each stage, I guess. Next. Um, here's matching Naviance. This is, <laughs> you can't see it, I know that. Um, but it, this is the one place, and this is a new page. Have you guys seen this? When you match in? Yeah, this is the new page. So this is a new page for guidance counselors as well on how to match your Common App and your Naviance. So actually what you're doing is you have your Naviance account where we're uploading things, and you have your Common App where you've done your application. And what we're doing is we're matching them so that they're like married and that when we send something off, they're together. So this is on your Naviance account, and um, I'm sorry, your Common App account. And if your child has trouble with this, it literally takes two seconds, they can come down. I always found it so much easier to just sit with my student and do it, because it takes two minutes rather than try to explain to them how you do this. But I think they were told it was confusing, so they got this new page. So my hope is that this, did you have any problem with it? You didn't, okay. So I'm hoping that that page is now more self-explanatory. I think it was confusing before, and maybe that's why they changed it. It's easier. It's easier. Yeah. She's saying it's red, so that note up there, the note once you match, that's red, not yellow. But um, Ms. Goldie's saying it's easier. Oh. This is Common App website, right? I'm sorry. FERPA, yeah, <laughs> so it's called the FERPA, and that's where you're waving your rights to see your letters, and, yep, and the next screen, no, maybe not the next one, go ahead. Nope, nope, so this is your Common App, and when you see on the left-hand side, profile family education, testing, activities, and writing, when those are all green, that means that you're done. It will stay red. The beautiful thing about Common App is it will not allow you to hit submit unless you're done. 
okay? So it, it has built-in protection. So you'll keep, it will keep bringing you back and telling what you haven't done yet. So it's really self, it preserves you. Next. I'm sorry. Yes, yep, this is just a common app. Yep, so here's what she's talking about on the left-hand side where it says recommendations in FERPA. You have to go on, so this is the common app under my colleges. And you go here, and then you go to Naviance. And it, it will make sense, I promise you. Like, it, I know showing you one page at a time isn't going to help you, but we just did this so you can see that that's the page. Again, if you have trouble connecting them, we can do it in less than two minutes. So just send your, your child down, okay? Them, but they're really helpful. It like spells out everything to do in that section of the, so please read that first. We also do have user-friendly manuals for any yeah. questions you might have. Literally seven pages worth of, I'm not really sure what to fill out in this section. So we can provide that as well and you can walk through it at home at your own leisure. Okay. So we don't add the teacher here. Right, oh that's a good point, Carolyn. So where it says, teacher and it says required one, allowed for, you do not add your teachers here. You, you request your teacher's recommendation through Naviance, not through Common App. If you request them through Common App, it does kind of mess it up a little bit. And it says it on the sidebar, <laughs> if your school uses Naviance, do not request your teachers or counselors here. Okay, all right, next. All right, this is a great, um, website, it's a great resource, mass.edu. Um, it will show you um, all the different requirements. The GPA is critical, you, you can see us or your counselor for that. Be familiar with the specific things. The, the one that is the most important for you to know is nursing and what's required for nursing. Nursing is probably the most challenging um, school of major, thank you, to get into, um, and you have to apply early. It, it's, it, there's just no way of getting around that. You need to apply early now, um, and it is very competitive. So if your child is going into nursing, please make sure their guidance counselor is aware and that they're working with them to make sure that they get everything in early, okay? Um, community um, college transfer program, again, I mentioned it at the beginning, I think it's amazing. Um, if your child does not le need to live away, um, they don't need to live in a dorm, they don't not needing that experience, some kids don't. The ability for them to go to a two-year community college and pay community college prices for two years, if they have a 3.0 or better, they're automatically guaranteed to get into any of our state schools at a discounted rate and finish their four-year degree in four years. So two years, I'm just gonna say Middlesex Community College, two years at UMass Amherst, their four-year degree comes from UMass Amherst. It's a great financial way of, of working this in. Now some kids need that experience, want that experience, and should have that experience. But if your child isn't one of them, that's great. They can do that. Or if your child just isn't ready for four-year college yet, it's also a very good alternative. Um, can you go back one? Um, Adams Scholarship. You should be finding out about the Adams Scholarship in October. Um, so if you, you will take the MCAS scores from your child's 10th grade, and it is the top 25% of their class at Woburn High. So most of the time, it's you had to get too advanced on the MCAS, um, but sometimes we've had years that too advanced doesn't even make it because there's so many kids in that particular class that got too advanced. So it's the top 25% scores um, so it's the combined scores together, the numbers that they got, top 25%, and that is tuition for a state school of their choice that they get into. 
it's, I don't want to say it's not a lot, but it's, I think for UMass Amherst, which is the most expensive of our, our state schools, I think it costs about $28,000 to go there now, and I think the scholarship is $1,400 a year. Now, $1,400 a year for four years is still a lot of money, but it's not free to go to UMass Amherst. Okay. Um, this was, cool. this was cool when I was searching with my son. There was a couple of colleges that his, what he wanted to do wasn't offered in Massachusetts. And so um, there's a New England area colleges that if you find a unique um, major that your child wants to that we don't offer in, the, in Massachusetts, if they find it in another state school, they can go to it. Right now, you Maine also has a great um, opportunity where if you have a certain GPA and a certain SAT score, and it's not too, too high, um, you can get in-state tuition. So it's, it's, a, it's a good deal if they want to be far away, they don't want to go to a, our state schools, you can go to an out-of-state school for state school costs. Anything on that? You guys are good? All right. Next. Clearinghouse, if your child is an athlete, a Division I or a Division II athlete, um, they need to check in with our guidance secretary. She is, takes care of all of that, but they also have to apply through the clearinghouse. So this is anybody that's Division I or Division II. If you're a Division III athlete, you do not need to do this, okay? They take $25 from you and they clear you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It's a money market. Um, okay, one, two. Okay, that's it. And we have a financial aid night here, which is next Wednesday. Lucky you if you want to come back. Um, it will answer, it's not, I will be here, but it's run by um, MIFA, and a representative from Tufts Financial Aid Department will be here, and she'll be here to go through the MIFA um, PowerPoint and answer any questions you have. That, too, will be available online. That's not to deter you from coming. It's actually a great opportunity to ask specific questions if you have anything unique about it. Um, you could have started yesterday, right, or October 1st, um, filling out the FAFSA for, for, for next year. Um, CSS profile is for um, some of the... Um, uh, um, some of the private schools not only require a financial aid, but they require a, a CSS profile, which um, speaks more specifically about your assets and specific. Sometimes it's helpful, sometimes it makes things worse. It, you just, <laughs> whatever. Um, but um, you will know if you need one because it will tell you on the application that, you know, the school that you need a um, CSS profile. I would check by going on the website and seeing um, if you need one. Yes? Oh, so when you, so you just need an ID to actually start the CSS profile. Okay. So you might want to apply for that now if you know that you have colleges that are on it. That's right, yep. Um, okay, next, Can I just yep. Can add something about the FAFSA? So yep. some colleges require there to be a deadline for that to be submitted oh, yeah. based on merit scholarship. So some, I was just looking on BU's website the other night and December 1st is when they want their information filled out to help them with, with determining merit scholarship. So again, um, th there does need to be a lot of research on your end if your kid has a lot of schools, because they're gonna vary. And some schools definitely say the sooner you get those in, money gets uh, allocated quickly, you know, so more money is given out earlier than later, I guess. Okay, so, so for the merit scholarship, which is your, the scholarship you would be getting um, for your child's GPA and SAT scores, um, the money that's attached to that merit scholarship is gonna be based on your FAFSA. Um, so if you are available next Wednesday and you haven't started your FAFSA, it might be a good idea for you to come and kinda listen to that person talk. Yep.
So what they do is if they know you have need, they will, so it's, the merit is based on, yes, your GPA and whatever, but they have a certain amount of money that for merit. And if they see on your FAFSA that, and you have it in, that there's also a need, you will get that. Does that make sense? Right, right, and, and I, I right, I do think that the schools have consistently said to us to get it in merit money scholarship, the earlier you get your FAFSA in, the better. You might, that, I, I'll, if I can remember, remind me, um, <laughs> I'll ask that next week and um, you can give me a call and I'll see if I can get that answered because it is a good question. It, it does sound contradictory, but I definitely know that that has been what we've been asked to, to, to relay earlier is better. So we got three, hold on, one. yep. So a merit, merit is not, you don't pay it back. Yeah, merit is, you get, you could get $10,000 to be you on merit, and that's just given to you. That's taken off. Oh, sure. Yes, yes. That's in addition to the other things. Yes. That is the shift that is coming. Early action is a more of, it's becoming more and more popular. Before, some schools didn't allow you to apply early until you had your first term grades. So some schools are waiting, if you're not a shoe in they're waiting for that first term grade. So you could apply early without those first term grades if you're on the, eh, we don't know if we're gonna take you or not, they might defer you to regular action anyways. So if, if you're a shoe in go early. If you really want that school, you can go early and take your chances. They, they probably, if you're on the cusp, are not going to reject you. They will put you into the regular admissions, if anything. But they will, a lot of the schools, more and more, I say if you go early, you have to have a tough skin because you will not get accepted into your schools, all of them. You will get deferred. And you have to understand that deferred does not mean no, it means deferred, and you're getting put into the regular application pool. Every school has a different percentage, but it's a small percentage of kids that get accepted in the early action pool. So they don't accept everybody in that early action pool. So they might accept 20% of their applicants during the early action. So if you, want to get it over with and you have everything in order and you're a shoe in you should do it. If you want to get it over with and you're on the cusp, I still would recommend that you do it. If you think that your first term grades are going to make a difference, you shouldn't do it. There's definitely a possibility of being denied. Before Thanksgiving. Somebody had a question up there, no? Yes. Early decision makes you commit. Early action does not. So we, we very seldom recommend early decision. Um, you know, kids change their mind all the time and, and um, early decision is a commitment and you have to prove that you couldn't afford it if you get accepted there and then choose not to go. So we don't recommend that. 
early action is, is a different stance. But not all schools, all, like BU only has early decision or regular decision. Right. They don't have early action. I do think that is considered, as Ms. Goldie said, it, it is, it's another way of showing that, that you're interested, but I also think it's really important that you know if you do not have the grades to get in there, early action, and you think that you might do well as a senior and get that GPA up and show some growth, you don't wanna go early because you could get denied. So even with all the interest in the world, if your GPA, SAT scores, and certain things aren't there, you could get denied. So you do just want to be thoughtful about going early. Yes? Okay. Um, next. Um, so that, that's just saying that you can apply now in October, basically. So next. Next. Um, social media, we tell the kids this, you guys I'm sure have been telling them for 10 years, social media is an easy way for colleges to identify kids. Um, they creep, I'm sorry, you know, they have kids that work in their admissions office that might be from Woburn, and they see all these kids from Woburn and they say, oh, send a friend request or whatever they do, I don't even know how they do it nowadays, I'm old, so, so I do Facebook, and that's not how they do it. But they'll see their profile and if there's drinking and if there's all this stuff on there, they see it and, and it's sad but it's true. Social media is just something that they should stay professional on at this point. Their emails, if they haven't changed their email from the one that they made in junior high, um, change it. It should be a professional um, email. Don't ch Well, I guess don't change it now in the middle of the college process, but if they haven't submitted stuff, it should just be, you know, first initial last name at a place. Don't have any crazy stuff in there. Um, there is no such thing as a senior slide, or actually there is and there shouldn't be. <laughs> um, seniors are already sliding. Um, and we have had students get accepted to schools and then the schools re renege on their applications because of a significant, serious senior slide. It wasn't like they went from Bs to Cs. But um, it is very important that your child does not go spiraling down that. And it's also important just for their own knowledge so that when they're in that math class next year, if they didn't pay attention this year, that math is gonna be super hard when they're in school. Um, okay. So, um, the last slide, take responsibility for their future, be proactive, ask questions, do not procrastinate. Next, what will you do today? And they get accepted, yay! <laughs> um, so that's the end of the presentation. Like I said, the presentation is going to be available on the social, our social media, so it will be on the website. Um, I think um, Brian Olette said he's gonna have it tweeted out or do whatever he does so that it will be available. The kids have all seen this last year. They're seeing it again this week. If you'd like to stay and meet with the guidance counselors and ask specific questions, Mrs. Anderson and I are gonna be down in this corner. Ms. Owen is gonna be up in that upper thing. Um, Ms. Goldie is gonna be in the back right, and Mrs. O'Hare will be down in this, in, on this right. Oh, one more. One more. Sorry, up there. Thank you. So these are all of our um, email, all their email, they got taken off. <laughs> all their email addresses. Um, you can take a snapshot of that, but it's also um, on our website. I'm gonna repeat just in case you don't know and you wanna ask questions. 
Miss Goldie is A through DI, Miss Owen is DJ through I, Miss O'Hare is J through O, and P through Z is uh, Miss Anderson, myself, and ELL parents over there. 